Alrighty, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy White Album here. Welcome back to some more Tsukihime, a piece of blue glass moon. Man, let's get into it, shall we? Let's get into it. Alright, last time we left off, we met the twins and the new head of the Tono family, who happens to be Shiki's sister. So here we go. We have our own servant now, I guess. That's what you want to call uh, Heat Sweep, but here we go. We make our way back out to the second floor lobby. The lobby splits the tonal mansion into two things, uh, two wings, almost at two things. <laughs> it's like a giant bird in flight, extending its wings far in both directions. Each wing is roughly the size of a small hospital. I vaguely recall the building that, uh, that the building is symmetrical, with the same number of rooms on both sides. Your room is this way, Master Shiki. Instead of descending the stairs, Hisui continues along the walkway overlooking the lobby towards the west wing. I guess that means my room is on the second floor of the west wing. That's one genius. <laughs> <clears throat> the sun is already set outside. Blue carpets line the hallway, extending in either direction. The uniform white walls bring a castle to mind. The maid walks down the hall, lit by warm orange lights. It's like something of a fairy tale. No filter between brain and mouth here. Is there anything I can help you with, Master Shiki? So yeah, we're the nearest hotel. I don't want to be here. <laughs> uh, no, I was just talking to myself. Don't worry about it. Hisui gives a light bow but, uh, after glancing at me and continues walking again. Yeah, damn, I'm thirsty as shit. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I don't know what to say. And that's not the first time since returning. Uh, and that's not the first time since returning to the mansion. The floor is made with expensive teak wood. A ceiling that must be at least three meters high. I think I could see a sunroom further down the hall. The room Hisui shows me isn't where you'd expect a high schooler to live. This room is for me? Yes. Well, I can show you another room if this isn't to your liking. その... Uh, no, there's no problem with it at all. Uh, it's, it's just... It's way too fancy for me. Shiki-sama. Master Shiki? Never mind, it's nothing. I'd be glad to have this room. Understood. Nothing has been changed since you stayed here, so I trust you will find it to your liking. Huh. Does that mean... Can I ask you a question? Is this the room I used to live in? So I have heard. Am I mistaken? Hisui tilts her head slightly. I feel a little better, uh, so she isn't completely devoid of emotion. Hmm. Now that you mention it, you're right. It does look familiar somehow. This doesn't feel like my room at all, but I guess that's what happens when you've been gone for seven years. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's just gonna take some adjusting. This morning, my room was barely big enough for a desk and a bed, and now it's a room for uh, now it's a room out of a luxury uh, what? And now it's a room out of a luxury hotel. Luxury hotel. Damn. Sorry. <laughs> I understand how you feel, but please try to grow accustomed to your station. 
You are the eldest son of the Tono family from today. If I was somebody, if I hear that one more fucking time, I understand I'm the son of the the eldest son of the damn family. You don't need to keep reminding me, all right? I get it. Yeah, I guess. I'll do my best not to become a laughing stock at least. I set my bag on the desk and stretch. I'm still a bit overwhelmed by everything, but I don't have much choice other than to get used to it. At the very least, I need to be comfortable enough to relax in my own space. Your belongings arrived last night, and I took the liberty of bringing them here. Is everything accounted for? I'll hold on just one moment, you guys. In fact, I just had to let the, my dog out of the room for a bit. <clears throat> He'll probably be back making more noise, but who knows. <laughs> as far as I can tell, yeah. Oh, was there something I'm not allowed to have? No, there was just a little to speak of. I thought something might have been misplaced. Please let me know if there's anything you require, as I would be happy to produce it for you. I gotcha. I think I'm okay for now. I don't have much stuff in the first place. All I really need is that bag, my glasses, and... The only things in my bag are my textbooks and a white ribbon that I kept for a long time. A white ribbon? Hmm. I wonder if that's going to be coming into play soon. I honestly don't know, just, that's just me saying that. <laughs> Anyways, you don't need to worry about my stuff. This room by itself is more than enough for me. <clears throat> Understood. I will call for you in one hour then. In an hour? For dinner, you mean? Yes. Yes, please. Feel free to relax until then. Hisu sweat. Uh, Hisu. What? Damn. Hisu says. Damn, that's a tongue twister there. Try that at home. Uh, devoid of emotion, uh, as seems to be her usual. But now my problem is how to kill an hour. It's just past six. If it were yesterday, I would play with my phone or watch some TV in the living room. But I can't see the mansion having a place for people to get together and wind down. Hisui, uh, can I ask you a stupid question? Does the mansion have internet or TV? Internet or a TV? Hisui narrow her, uh, narrows her eyes ever so slightly. Even asking the question gives me a headache. Asking about modern luxuries in a decent old-fashioned mansion like this seems wrong. I don't believe either are available in the parlor. There's a recreation room in the West Wing, but it's currently locked. Our guests that left us recently had items for personal use, but they asked to take their things with them. So did they, have, did they leave like a, a pinball table or something like that? <laughs> Is that the relatives Do you mean the relatives Aki had chased out? Actually, who was here? And how long did they stay? The eldest, Kukamine, and his family stayed in the third, uh, third room of the West Wing, uh, of the West Wing's first floor. The third daughter of the Tozuki, uh, 
uh, Tozaki family and her uh, and her fiance stayed in the corner room of the West Wing second floor. The eldest son of the Kishima family stayed in the uh, first room of the East Wing's first floor. They all stayed with us for three years. Lastly, I was told that Master Makihisa's personal physician was also staying in the mansion. Oh, three whole years. That sounds, more, that sounds more like freeloading than being a guest, don't you think? Hisui doesn't answer. Her position as housemaid must prevent her from voicing her personal opinions about the guests. Regardless, if they've taken all their belongings with them, I can't expect to find anything I can use. Maki Hisa uh, hated any kind of modern convenience, so I can't imagine he would have allowed them access to the internet. Or a TV. <laughs> Akia must have taken after our father. Oh well, not like I'll die without them or anything. If nothing else, I still have my phone. I take it out of my pocket and check the time. It's silly to, uh, it's silly to think I was actually worried I might not get service here. It may not be much, but I'm relieved to have at least some way of connecting to the internet. I expected to be stuck without one, considering how out of this, how, wait, how out of this, out of this world this place is. What a weird uh, framing they did there. <laughs> hmm. Meanwhile, Hisui is silent. I don't know if it's just her trying to be professional, but Hisui doesn't speak unless it's necessary, or she's at something. Not being used to having personal, or not used to having a personal attendant, it's a little unnerving. I'd like to try and make her smile somehow, but it's not going to be easy. I think I remember a library on the first floor of the West Wing. I'll have to make use of it when I find some time. The hell's with that close-up? <laughs> what the hell? That's, a, that's like an unneeded jump scare. Hisui doesn't respond. She's looking in my direction, but her eyes are fixed on the empty space uh, next to me, rather like a cat. Hisui? Hisui? Hisui says nothing. Until she suddenly returns her gaze to me. I believe my sister may, be, uh, may have one in her room. Huh? Huh? I blurted it out without meaning to. Could she mean... A television. I believe I saw one in my sister's room once. He says, Damn it, he sweet says, damn. Why is that so hard to say? <laughs> like she's recalling a memory from a long time ago. Well, that's a relief to hear. I guess not even the mansion is safe for modernization. Actually, hold on a second. Sister, do you mean Kohaku? Yes, my sister and I are the only ones working here in the mansion. Now that I think about it, they do look a lot alike. Hisui is so different from her cheery sister. I didn't even consider that they might be related. Huh. It does seem like she'd be into comedies. I stopped short of asking to use it, as I feel too embarrassed to go into her room. Sorry. Look, just forget I ever brought it up. I need to follow the rules if I'm going to be living here, right? I don't think Aki would ever let me live it down if I spend the first night back lounging in front of the in front of the TV. I like uh, I like the perfect little student, some uh, someone worthy to uh, worthy of the Tono name. 
I'll stay in my room until dinner. Uh, would you call me when it's uh, when it's time? I'm sure you have other things you need to do. Kizui nods affirmatively and puts her hand on the doorknob. The door opens with a faint squeak. Kizui leaves the room after a small bow. You know, for two people, that's a lot of glitter clatter that's making <laughs> that's making noise. I dine with Akio. Both Kohaku and Hisui are completely devoid to serving the two of us. Or devoted, not devoid. <laughs> Servants are allowed to dine at the same table as their masters. It goes without saying, but having grown up with the Arimas, this setup makes me uncomfortable. I've also completely forgotten about table manners. Humans have evolved the ability to remove useless pieces of, of information from their minds, which means any memories I had of table etiquette are long gone. Every movement I make, it lets a ra uh, raised eyebrow from Akia. It's nerve-wracking, but it does spice up our mealtime. To be honest, the idea that I'll be doing this every day from now on is disheartening. Dinner ends in silence. I was so desperate to remember my table manners, I wasn't able to come up uh, even uh, I wasn't even able to come up with small uh, with any small talk. Akia seemed displeased the entire time. Isui Kohaku just finished taking away our plates when the reckoning comes. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Ah, it seems a thorough re-education is in order after all, she says plainly. The cold, cruel comment reverberates around the din uh, dining room. Dining. What the hell's wrong with me? Dining room? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with me today, man? Damn. Okay. Oh? For who and what kind? You. To enforce proper behavior, of course. Huh, I know it. So that's what she was thinking about while raising her eyebrows at me. So, what does that mean? What does that mean? First, we'll be implementing some lifestyle changes. Your curfew will be at 8 p.m., and there will be no going outside at night. You'll obtain permission from me, Kohaku, or Hisui before leaving the mansion for any reason. Huh? An 8 p.m. curfew? How old does she think I am? More importantly, I need permission just to leave? Prisoner in his own home. <laughs> wait, wait. Back up. I will draft a study regimen for your weekends. According to the reports I received, your grades are as average as average can be. Look, as long as he's getting some C's and B's, man, he's good. <laughs> I swear. The only thing you're good at is slacking off. <laughs> Rude. I gave everything my all. As long as you reside in this mansion, you will take these uh, you will take these things seriously. You are capable, regardless of your condition. I'm sure you will have no issue reaching the top three of your class. He's like, N -n oh. <laughs> my sister is painfully overestimating me. And it's scary how much she knows about my grades. Let us continue these lessons once you're more settled in. Whoa. <laughs> it's his phone, don't worry. 
Now then, please take it out, Shiki. Hi. What? What does she mean by it? What else could I be referring to? This fucking wording is great. The degenerate thing young people keep hitting in their pants. Oh. This dude, okay, this fucking the 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 writers knew what they were doing when they were uh when they were writing these uh this this paragraph here. It's great. I'm telling you to take it out already. Whoa, what the hell are you saying? Is this really what you up? Is this what? Is this what? Is this really what the upper class is about? You think you can do whatever you want to us normal folk? She's like, she's like, dude, what? Fucking freak, dude. <laughs> what? I'm telling you to show me your mobile device. You have one, don't you? <laughs> Fine. I take out my phone from my back pocket. As soon as I place it on the table, he sweet wordlessly takes the phone and gives it to Akio. I'll be confiscating this. And a growing young student like yourself has no use for it. You may use the phone in the lobby if you need to contact someone. If you wish to research something, you can. Uh, you are welcome to use the library. Akia cuts our one-sided conversation short and leaves the dining room. I find myself stunned into silence for the ninth time this day, or the the ninth the ninth time today. I'm sure that's I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be ninth. I want to say the ninth. I want to say that, but I read ninth and it reminds me of like ninth metal from like the you know the DC universe. <laughs> I was never super attached to my phone. I mostly used it for texting and to check in the news when I had some free time. Though, like most people. I consider it a basic necessity. That's another reminder how strict the tonal household really is. I mean, banning phones in this day and age? And all right. I return to my room now that dinner is finished. It's just past 9.30 p.m. I spent about two hours in the dining room at the end. Welcome back, Master Shiki. I took the liberty of preparing your bed. He sweet greets me as soon as I enter my bedroom. I see my bed's waiting for me, neatly made. She was a step ahead of me, it seems. Oh, uh, thank you. I prepared pajamas as well, so please change into them at your leisure. Any clothing you worn for the day can be placed in the basket over there. If you can leave it out in the hall when you're finished, that would be most appreciated. A wicker basket is placed at the foot of the bed. I assume if I put my dirty clothes here and place it in the hallway, then Hisui will clean them for me. This is starting to feel like even more. Uh, this is starting to feel even more like an, uh, uh, some upscale hotel. Do you have any questions? Like, yeah, I know how to do my own laundry. <laughs> Hisui stands there, as still as uh, still as a statue. I have plenty of questions, but it dawns on me that I know very little about Hisui or Kohaku. Uh, do you mind if, if I ask you something completely off topic? Yes. Of course. What is it? Hisui and Kohaku are doing what kind of job I want I'd like to know more about the work you and Kohaku do here, if you don't mind. I like to know more about the work you and Kohaku do here, if you don't mind. I like to know more about the work you and Kohaku do here, if you don't mind. My sister is assigned to take uh, to take care of Mistress Akio. 
While I'll be while I will be attending to your needs, Master Shiki. We make sure everything in the mansion's in order while you two are away. Is there anything is, is there anything else? Attending to my needs. So it is like that, huh? My shoulders feel heavy. I can explain everything like it went without saying, but I'm just a normal high school student. I don't have much interest in being waited on hand and foot by a girl my own age. Does that mean you're my personal housekeeper? Yes. Please don't hesitate to call me. Uh, call on me if there's anything you require. He sweet bows deeply. My chest times with guilt. Understood. Based on what Aki has said, I'm sure she doesn't want you to leave me alone, and I can't just ask you to stop. So I'll accept your help, but. Do you have a special request of some kind? It's nothing big, really. I just can't get into being called master. I'm no one special. And if I'm being honest, it makes me feel so out of place. It's like someone's got me by the collar. Uh, there is somebody that's got you by the collar and she's called Aki, a dog. <laughs> She's got a fucking leash around her neck, dude. Come on now. Not defending Akia, it makes sense, but, you know. But you are my master, Master Shiki. Yeah, you say that. But I was just a normal person until today. Being called master by a girl my own age, just for coming back home, is a little too much for me. Isui seems nonplussed. What the fuck does that mean? What he talks about. You can just call me Shiki. No need for that formal stuff. And I'll call you Hisui. She's like, fuck no, that's not what I'm being paid for. <laughs> if she's being paid at all. Hisui, though otherwise expressionless, lowers her eyebrows and bites her lip. Nonplussed, a person surprised or confused so much that they're unsure how to react. Mm, that's a new word. Man. I like how it's just one word sentence, man. <laughs> I wanted to make things easier for her, but it looks like they may have the opposite effect. But you are my master. I'm not the one hiring you, right? Oh, that was what I said. Like. She was like, excuse my frankness, but dude, come on up. But the circumstances remain the same. I'm employed by the Tono family. Whether I'm assigned to the head of the family or another member, that does not change how I address you. I ask that you consider me your humble servant. To do so otherwise would be to disregard my place in this manner. Please understand. He's like, yeah, I feel you. I just showed up like like five hours ago. <laughs> you think you you feel displaced out of this damn manner? Try feel like, hey, look at me. <laughs> I haven't been here in fucking seven years. I feel like I don't even fucking belong here. But I'm the eldest son of the family. <laughs> Hmm. Hard to argue against that. Her answer really does fit that of a man or servant. 
俺にできないことをやってくれるんだからありがたがるのはこっちなんだけど。Oh well, I should be the one thanking you for everything you do. Arguing will only serve to trouble her further. I will refrain, my,、uh, I'll refrain from voicing my own opinions on the matter for now. So I'll call you Hisui then. Yes, please. That is my name. <laughs> Her please is a bit, has, a bit of a,、uh, has a bit of punch to it. Okay, I'll make sure to do that. But I'd appreciate if you'd avoid being too formal with me. If you could tell Kohaku that as well, that'd be great. <laughs> of course. Whatever you say, Master Shiki. He's like, bruh. He s w e e t lowers her head gracefully. Alright. Let's have we got a long ways to go until we can talk casually. He s w e e t leaves the room after bowing. The moment I'm alone, a wave of exhaustion、uh, crashes over me. A lot happened today. My body's crying out for so,、uh, for so much needed rest. I turn off the light and lie on the bed. I can tell,、uh, I can tell I'll s、uh, what? I can tell I'll sleep like a rock. I try to fight against the sleep creeping in. I somehow be able to keep my eyes open, but it's a losing battle. No matter how hard I fight, I fall deeper. That's just how the human body is built. I stare at the ceiling, still in the space between consciousness and sleep. Back after seven years, seeing family again, well, the one, it still feels like someone else's house, that's because it is. But you're home now, I say, trying to accept everything. My consciousness slips away as I sink into a deep slumber. A mansion on a high hill, far away from the bustling of the, of the town. Like an island surrounded by a sea of trees. I come to the conclusion the instant my eyes close, it's like a prison. Hey, that's what I've been saying for two videos now. That's exactly how Aki is treating you, my man. She's treating you like a prisoner. She gave you a curfew. She took your phone. You can't do shit, man. As long as it's under supervision. Oh. I awake suddenly. Nobody woke me. Nor did I hear a sound. It just happened. Seemingly for no reason. I wonder how long it's been since I woke up in the middle of the night. I get up. Feeling like I've forgotten something. A shiver on knees creeps, and,、uh, creeps over me as I exit my room. I stare down the hallway in search of a glass of water to slake my thirst. The long, moonlit hallway lies before me. The night is totally silent. This all feels so familiar.、I、must have done something exactly like this when I was younger. I find myself wandering to the stairs, aimlessly, yet not. There, a hidden section of the mansion. The stairs connect not only the first and second floors, but there's also an,、uh, to an attic by the way, by way of a secret passage. It seems even the people living here have long forgotten this place. The room, once used for storage, so there's no trace of anyone having used it in years. Despite being midway through October, it's unseasonably cold tonight. I rummage through the room, hoping to find a blanket. An old cabinet catches my eyes. I open each drawer. 
looked like the uh, the cabinet from uh, from Harry Potter. You know, the one that like that uh, that shows you what your your greatest fear is. <laughs> the Bogart. What is it called? The Bogart cabinet or something like that. You remember it. You know what I'm talking about. I find some odds and ends, but little of note. There's nothing worthwhile in the drawers. Even the giant chest I open has only a few scattered stones inside. A badge, a few trinkets, a pair of binoculars, all things a child might collect. Among them, a single, stand, a single thing stands out, different from everything else. Stained bandages, sealed in a plastic case, or clear plastic case. They're rolled up neatly, but so old they could never be used. There's nothing here. I shut the drawer and start back to my room. Oh, was he just crying? Oh, he is. What's my boy crying about, huh? I guess like some like uh some like sleepwalking type memories. Man, it's getting all teary eyed over here. Stained bandages. Huh. That ought to be had to be from him, right? But who got them? No clue. Especially in a room that hasn't been used in what you could say seven years, ten years probably. Longer, who knows? Upon exiting the room, I realize my cheeks are wet. I wonder. Could I have used this place when I was a child? Oh shit. Uh yes, I want to save my progress. Save it again. Ooh, here we go. I guess we're on the second chapter. A day that was not. Okay. Day two. A day that was not. Whatever the hell that means. You realize one day that you don't dream. All you see is your past set on repeat. I don't know. There's some fuck. I have some crazy fucking dreams sometimes, man. And I can tell you for a fact that I don't think that's my past. <laughs> a tapestry of introspection and rumination. A refrain of what happened and what will happen through the lens of a lucid dream. You do not dream. I am not here. Fiki Tono was never known what it means to dream, or has never known what it means to dream. I do not know you. And so, this story is over. And yet, you still continue to dream, unwilling to forget. Like the stars twinkling on top the falling snow. Like the sea roaring amongst the crashing of waves. Like the crumbling moon craving your shadow. Refrain, 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 refrain. Cool. <laughs> Good morning. I hear an unfamiliar voice. My consciousness slowly returns. It is morning, Master Shiki. Time to wake up. But I thought I told her I didn't want her calling me Master. It makes me super, super uncomfortable. I open my eyes. Grab my glasses from the bedside and put them on. The lights faint instantly. I sit up, trying to shake away the remnant uh, remnants of sleep. Where am I? Good morning, Master Shiki. 
The maid bows. Ah, so ka. Tono no yen ni modotte kitan dake. Alright. I'm back in the Tono mansion. Hi. Kino wa o tsukare datta to zonjimas. Yes. I believe you were quite tired last night. Hisui stands by the door to my bedroom, her posture perfect like a statue. My mind is still a bit foggy, likely from sleeping in a new place. Master Shiki? Hisui calls out to me. I shake my head to wake myself up. Morning, Hisui. Thanks for the wake-up call. Please, there's no need to thank me. I am simply doing my duty. Hisui answers flatly. That's too bad, I think. Hisui would be unstoppable if she just had half the brightness of her sister. I'm pretty sure there's a reason for that. Can't remember, but... Uh... Yeah, I can't remember. But uh, I think there's a reason why Hisui is kind of like the stoic person, or like the stoic, yeah, the stoic person I have like between her and her sister. I don't remember much, but I know there's a reason for it. Not that I have any right to judge someone, uh, someone's character. <laughs> After all, I see fucking lines when I take my glasses off. Is there anything I can help you with? What's with this music? You hear this music? This is insane. I'm trying to like, fix my headphones and then fix my hat and then to not have my hair get all over the fucking place. It's insane. Ah, there we go. Hisui speaks up, perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps aware of my gaze. Yeah, ah, no, I'm good. I'd have forgotten where I was for a moment, but seeing your face has jogged my memory. I get out of bed and take a deep breath. The clock says it's a little before 7 a.m. It's a bit earlier than when I usually wake up. I'll change it head down. And she goes to the parlor. I mean, dining room, right? Yes. Yes, please come to the dining room. Your breakfast has been already prepared. Got it. Thanks. Hisui bows and leaves the room. I venture down to the first floor lobby. I've already changed my underclothes and put on my uniform. The dining room is just inside the west wing, mirroring the location of the parlor in the east wing. It's the large room to the left of the hall, on the opposite side of the stairs. Good morning, Shiki. I'll bring you some food right away. Kohaku had been waiting for me, it seems. Hisui must have told her last night about being called master. It makes me feel uncomfortable. It seems Kohaku is a little bit more flexible when it comes to that sort of thing. They really are about as different as two people can be. Kohaku quickly sets the table. Prepared for me is a full traditional Japanese meal. A one soup, three sides, set with rice. Except... Damn. Should have, some, uh, should have said something yesterday. Oh, is there something you don't like? Not a fan of turnips. Turnips are delicious. No, I'll eat pretty much anything, actually. It's just... There's a little too much. I've always been a light eater, especially when it comes to breakfast. The more I eat, the, war, uh, the worse my heartburn gets, until my appetite is totally gone. Dog, take some Tums, big man. You're gonna... <laughs> better carry around a bottle of Tums with you, bro, if that's the case. Some antacids or something like that. 
I feel pretty good today, so I probably could eat a full bowl of rice, but on bad days, I'll only manage a bite or two. Is that so? I've heard you were a light eater, so I made less than usual. Is this still too much? Sorry. I've been like this ever since my accident. Uh, but don't get me wrong, it looks delicious. The meal itself is perfect. I quickly brought out my honest impression. I don't want to seem ungrateful after Kohaku cooked a wonderful meal for me. None of this is her fault. Uh, thank you again. I'm sorry if I don't eat everything. Please, don't concern yourself with that. I'm a professional, so I'll use this opportunity to get a better understanding of how much you normally eat. Now enjoy your meal, and don't hesitate to tell me if there is anything you don't like. God, I gotta need some fucking chapstick, dog. My lips are so fucking dry whenever I play this. And I was at the store a few, like, like a day ago. I should have bought some, I didn't. Damn, this game's got more music than I think Witch on the Holy Night did. But to be fair, YouTube copyrighted me for like one song, and then I had to like listen. I had to play almost the entire game without the, without any of the soundtrack. What the hell is this? Oh shit! I can use my touchpad. Do you see this shit? What if I? Thank you for breakfast. It was delicious. <laughs> that's, okay, that's pretty sick. Um, but I, I mean, I did turn on the music at the end of the game, and goddamn, it was a good decision because oh, that like last scene. The Oko doing like her like her basically her power up with the music was insane, dude. So so far I got three videos out. It's about to be four, and I haven't gotten anything on YouTube being like, hey, this song is not, you know, you can't use the song. So we're good so far. So here we go. Thank you for breakfast. It was delicious. I bring my hands together and express my thanks. Kohaku's breakfast was a feast for the eyes as well as the stomach. It was uh, delicate delicately seasoned. When other flavors overpowering one of another, each bite served to only wet my appetite more. I'm sure most high school guys would have helped themselves to seconds or thirds. I feel terrible though. You went through all that effort, and I wasn't able to eat everything. No, no, it's quite all right. It's my fault for not asking you about it earlier. Besides, it was a joy to watch you eat. You look like you were really savoring every bite. It makes all the effort I spent learning my craft worth it. Gohaku smiles sweetly. I think she's got... I think she's got all things wrong. The joy is all mine. Getting to see a smile like that. Oh my, look at the time. Please go on ahead to the parlor. There's a cup of tea waiting for you there. I'll be in trouble if I hog you any further. Kohaku giggles as she continues tidying up. It's already 7.20 a.m., so I should start getting ready to, to go to school. I thank Kohaku one last time and leave the room. Hisui and Aki are already in the parlor when I arrived. When I arrived, there you go. Aki is wearing the uniform the uh, for Asagami Girls Academy, a prestigious school for young ladies. Yo, yo, ohayo, Akiha. 
Uh, hey, good morning, Akia. Good morning, dear brother. You woke up quite late today, though I will overlook this uh, overlook it this time. It was your first day back yesterday, so I presume you found it difficult to sleep. Yeah, I found myself in another fucking room for no reason. <laughs> Snippy is the first word that comes to mind. It was probably not a good idea to tell her that I actually woke up earlier than usual this morning. Hey, sweet. Pour my brother a cup of tea. I'll have another one as well. Of course. Would you like sugar, Master Shiki? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, one, please. Thus begins an inexplic uh, inexplicable morning. Kisui places a cup on the table and returns to her position by the wall. I take a sip of the ruby colored tea and. Hold on. What is this? Whoa. This tastes amazing. Christmas boy. Bitter yet sweet, complex yet totally drinkable. It's even it even smells like Christmas. Flabbergasted, I ramble on nonsensically. Nonsensically, there you go. I don't care much for the lavishness of the mansion I saw yesterday, but this tea is something else entirely. You found the spirit of the season in your cup, I see. Most assume the English make the finest black teas. But this here is an impeccable French-made blend, established in the 1850s, and brought to Japan only 15 years ago. I, it, uh, it's still not very widespread, but its quality is, is unmistakable. Ooh, don't let Alice hear you say that. Unless Alice probably said the same. It's been a while, but I know Alice was like a huge tea fanatic like that too, considering Alice herself is English. Well, half English. She's half Japanese and half English. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> So don't don't let her don't let her hear you say that. Christmas <laughs> という表現は曖昧すぎて評価しづらいですけど、不思議とニュアンスは伝わりますね。Comparing it to Christmas is an interesting choice and a little vague, but strangely, I know exactly what you mean. So it tastes like cloves and like cinnamon. I'm assuming. I, that's what I think when I when I think of Christmas, I think of like cinnamon, I think of clove, like a lot of like clove, like clove, bro, like heavy clove, cinnamon as well. I know there's like, I say the two like biggest, I guess like smells. I don't know what you want to say, potpourri, <laughs> I guess you could say when it comes to Christmas, clove, cinnamon. I mean, you could also do the same thing with uh, with, like Thanksgiving as well, but I I. I, I Associate cinnamon and clove a lot more with uh, with Christmas. And God, do I hate it sometimes. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if you ever been to like a Michaels or something like that, like a craft store. I don't know why you would be. I don't know why I would be in there either. But I don't know. If you ever just go to like a store and you walk in there, and you just that hit that that's fucking that smell just hits you. You know what I'm talking about? You know, like little like wooden brooms that that that, that just smell like cinnamon. That that's exactly what I'm talking about. We're just like it's just overwhelming for no reason. <laughs>お値段もお手頃だそうですし、庶民派のお兄さんに合わせてみた甲斐がありました。上質の葉には黄金に等しい価値があると勉強になりましたか？I was right to select a modestly uh, priced blend to match your simple palate. 
I hope you learn the good tea, that, that good tea is worth its weight in gold. Or you're a guy, but you know. She looks down on me as if I'm the as I'm the, what as if I'm the Neanderthal to her sophisticated queen. On the way, yeah. <laughs> Even the way she returns her cup to the saucers refined. I hate to admit it, but she's right. So this is what real tea tastes like. What have I been what have I been drinking uh, drinking up until now? I finally understand why all those trading companies brought it up just to get their hands on the stuff. Ten minutes have passed since I came to the parlor. Aki and I spent most of the time enjoying our tea. Few words were spoken. Every time our eyes met, we both turned our gazes back to our uh, to our cups. Honestly, I never felt more awkward. But even so, it wasn't a bad way to spend time. Having abandoned her for so long, seeing Aki able to pass time peacefully like this fills me with an emotion I can't quite explain. Relief? Is that what it is? Regardless, it makes me happy to see Aki in here in front of me. Just as I'm enjoying things, a strange noise comes from the hall. Time to build, time to love. Aki's face. <laughs> Chaotic, reckless, insanity. Off to hell, now come with me. The sound of someone's horrendously off-tempo humming creeps through the hall. Hi, good it's Dr. Arak. I think that's how you say her name, Iraq, like Arachnid. Good morning. Hope you've had an absolutely boss morning, boss. What the fuck? <laughs> the thing that slams open the door, the thing is crazy to call her that, that slams open the door is decked out in an outfit that's just outrageous as her entrance. Oh my god, this song, I'm sorry if I cut myself off. This, it kind of sounds like the, uh, like the Mission Impossible thing for a second. Hold on, that was kind of crazy. I was like, that's why it was like so stumped for a second. Hold on. On top of that, doesn't, uh, a top that doesn't leave much of the imagination and a tight leather skirt. Her long hair is crudely bound together. She doesn't seem to be wearing makeup, but her lips are strangely captivating. Her reddish blonde hair, combined with the fact that she's taller than me, tells me she's not Japanese. I glance at her unmistakable curves, or I glance at her unmistakable curves. She does have a great figure. Yeah, Cheeky is just every, you know, preteen boy out there, man. <laughs> or I guess teenage boy, because he's 17. She gives off the impression of a woman, the kind of person that would be more suited to lounging on the beach somewhere instead of standing here in this old mansion. At least, she would if she weren't, if it weren't for her white coat, which, she, which strangely suits her. I don't know, she's got like the fucking checkerboard underneath that shit, like a JoJo character. Now, <laughs> Rack, that's me. Good morning, Dr. Arak. What is it you need? I believe my regular checkup was supposed to be yesterday. I just wasn't feeling it yesterday, you know. The sunset really got my engine going, if you know what I mean. So I ditched the checkup and went to the uh, went out on the town. So basically, I played hooky, which is why I'm here bright and early today. Oh, I'll take a cup of tea as well, Miss Maid. Four spoons of sugar. Five, actually. No. I think it's a six spoon kind of day after all. Damn, six spoons of sugar in your fucking tea? That's insane, bro. And a cup is insane. Look, I, I'm a Florida boy, all right? I'm from the South. And we got, we got that sweet tea, baby. But that's made in a large batch, all right? Where we use a lot of sugar in a large, in a, again, large batch. 
not six spoons in a fucking cup that's, that's like this big that there you go that's like this big that's insane dude that's insane again i love me some sweet tea i haven't had actually I haven't had sweet tea in a hot minute but damn six spoons of sugar and one cup of tea is lethal dude that's fucking lethal <laughs> my lord that's insane the woman in the white coat barges into the parlor her eyes naturally meet uh, with mine Hmm. 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 I'm not repeating that. She stares at me. After scanning me for some time, I catch the woman smirking at me when. <laughs> this lady's fucking psycho. <laughs> This is the best thing I've ever seen. Are you trying to kill me, boss? You've given me a hardcore hit of A10 dopamine. I'm pretty sure it's about to be the, the six spoons of sugar that's going to kill you. Oh, man. Oh, man. You totally got me. What is this, Macbeth? You're already halfway to everyone being dead. The woman is doubled over, howling with laughter. All I can do is frown. Who is this person? I could call her doctor, but... Arak -sensei. Dr. Arak. Will you introduce yourself to my brother? Akia coughs and chides the woman, seeing my predicament. Huh? Introduce myself to little old cheeky. Who cares about that formal stuff? I've already heard plenty about him from Makihisa. Shiki-chan you're not interested in an outsider like me, are you, weed little shiki? Besides, if you had the cojones... <laughs> okay, I was expecting to read that. Would it be better directing that extra energy at the boss over there? From Makihisa? Then this woman knew my father? Yep. I was a free spirit, a wanderer, a webless spider going wherever the wind took me. But then, I met Makahisa. Get it? Spider? Dr. Arak? We get it. Why don't you come stay with us if you have nowhere else to go? He like totally hit on me, but too bad for him. He wasn't really my type, so I said no. Now I'm besties with the boss here. I think about it. I think that about sums it up. I look over to Akia to confirm if what I've just been told is true. I don't have the courage to talk to this woman directly. <sighs> Indeed, Dr. Rock attended university with her late father. Now, as a friend of his, she acts as my advisor. What? Don't call me that. What? Call me Professor and put some heart into it. If you don't, I'll make, uh, I'll cry right here and now. A rock laughs. Not even, uh, not even, uh, what? Not looking even the least bit sad. Except, even mid laughter, 
I noticed that her eyes never left me since she entered the room, like we've been connected by a thread. Get it, spider? <laughs> Here are Miss Rock, your tea. Kisui intervenes. Either unaware or unfazed by our conversation, she serves to calm Arak's energy. Oh, Miss Maid. You really are perfect, aren't you? She's not happy to be interrupted. Did she just gulp that shit down at one go? That's insane. Arak puts a hand on her hip as she downs her sugar filled tea in one breath. That's. <laughs> Lethal, bro. Six spoons of sugar. I'm sorry. That, that's damn, dude. That would that would kill me. <laughs> oh, nice sugar. What? What the fuck am I about to read? Okay. Whew, now that's some good sugar. Great for the organs, you know. It's going right to my ovaries. I feel the love. This lady is fucking mental. <laughs> Alrighty, time for a checkup. The air conditioner in the bath is on the fritz, right? Don't you worry your little heads. I'll have it done in a jiff. I'll even throw in some ion cluster tech. Alright, well... I think I'm going to be ending this soon because I just heard a firework going on. And if you don't know, it is the 4th of July. So, yep, my dogs are acting up. So, after this next bit, we're going to finish up here. A rock saunters over to the hallway, or to the door to the hallway, laughing all the while. She turns to face me, hand on the doorknob. Hope we get along. Uh, I hope we get along, Shiki. Us outsiders have to stick together, hmm? I'm sure you're gonna have, uh, I'm sure you're gonna have to deal with a lot. Or a lot to deal with. But if you ever find yourself lost, my door is always open. The intruder leaves the same way she arrived, humming to herself. <laughs> But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's where we're going to end it for today's video of Tsukihime. We got to meet Dr. Arak. Uh, Arak. Arachnid. There you go. Six spoons of sugar, man, is crazy, bro. I don't know about Shaw. Again, I'm a southern boy, so I love me some uh, some sweet tea. But that, again, we use six spoons, of, well, more than six spoons of sugar in a large batch and not just one cup. So I think she beat us there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but there we go. Hopefully you guys are enjoying. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. It is your boy White Album. I will see you guys next time.